if you do the legwork, it helps you revolutionize your business, not just the modules. So, but on top of that, you do the weekly coaching calls and not just one coaching call per week, but two coaching calls per week where you're actually investing your own time as a coach to guide us along the way based off of your experience. And we learn from each other. Like everybody's learning from each other. Everybody's sharing. There's no gatekeeping. It's so open and we can be vulnerable with each other. And that's how we're growing as business owners. It's just amazing to be a part of a community like the one that you've built. Like, I know I've told you before on the Facebook groups and social media, but I don't think there's a program really that matches TCA, mm. hands down. As an entrepreneur, as a business owner, I really need to value my time and I really need to price what I'm worth so that it all becomes worth it in the end. Whereas before, if I was scattered doing all those things that I was doing before, the bags, the decals, the mugs, the tumblers, you name it, you can be good at all these different things. And when you really narrow it down and, and niche down and focus, like mm -hmm. then you're more likely to really become a specialist. And that helps you to provide that really, really good value. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. I have someone super special for you today. Her name is Alicia. She is the artist behind Heirloom Inc. Studios. She is a military retiree who is now a thriving calligrapher because she joined the Craft Academy. So prior to the program, she was actually feeling really scatterbrained and did not really knowing exactly where she was going and ultimately just a hobbyist. Now she is feeling like she is a more focused business person who actually has an idea of exactly who her ideal client is and what her niche actually is. But before we jump into the interview today, I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Rosie. I'm the calligrapher behind Wander Crafter as well as the creator of the Craft Academy, which is a step-by-step -step program where we help calligraphers just like Alicia and you figure out how to create, automate, and scale their own calligraphy business businesses to design the life and live the life that they truly want. I started my business in 2017 and made so many mistakes, wasted time, money, effort, anxiety, all of the things before I discovered the formula that we now teach in the Craft Academy. So I'm excited to share another case study and success story from the Craft Academy members. So. Back to Alicia, since joining the Craft Academy, Alicia has actually worked with Disney, Dillard's, Essence Magazine, White Claw Vodka, and Alabama Wedding. So I'm super excited to introduce her. So let's get started. Hi, Alicia. Hi, how are you? Oh my gosh, so good. I'm excited to have you on here and share your story today. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm excited to share my story. Yeah, of course. And I'm super excited because this is your second career. You were in the military for how many years? 22 years. 22 years. You're now a retired military person. I'm excited to share your story because this is your second career. You've had a very kind of rigid and kind of like step-by-step -step career since being in the military. And now you get to be your own boss. You get to create and write your own story. And I'm excited to share like what you've done in these past couple of months. Um, can you remind me when you joined the Craft Academy? I joined in April of 2023. So so not too long ago. Okay, and we're filming in November, so it's just about six, seven months now, and you've made so much progress in Alabama, so that's amazing. So give us your quick and dirty CEO story. So I started Heirloom Inc. Studio back in the summer of 2018 while I was still in the military. Like you said, the job that I was working was extremely structured, uh, very rigid, and I oftentimes would come home a little bit stressed out, you know, and just looking for something creative to do. And I wanted a creative outlet. But on top of that, I also wanted a side hustle that could help uh, supplement my family income. So naturally, I thought of calligraphy because I've loved calligraphy since I was a teenager. So I knew that it had to be something in that space. And then also I wanted to do something within the wedding industry. So naturally, I gravitated towards Etsy because at the time, Etsy was really big on weddings and, you know, um, serving bride to be. So naturally I got involved in Etsy and it was actually pretty quick and easy to set up, but I definitely had some stumbling blocks along the way. That's actually a really good story because we did an interview with Michi beginning of this year. So if you haven't seen Michi's interview yet, definitely recommend doing that because she was also in Etsy for a couple of years. And since joining the Craft Academy, she's actually shut it down entirely and is now focused more on the service-based industry of calligraphy. What's unique about Alicia's story is that she started off with Etsy, she joined TCA and then she actually closed it and now she's reopened it and it has been a little bit more successful than previous. So we'll definitely dive into her tactical information 
information on how she did that. So before we get there, can you tell us like how you got started with the business side and like what sparked that interest for you after you retired? So after I retired, I went back to Etsy because I actually had taken a three year break from it. When I moved to Germany, there were all these laws and restrictions that kind of like really prevented me from wanting to get involved. And I didn't want to deal with any legal, you know, issues or anything like that. Plus mm -hmm. being over in Germany, I knew that it was going to be kind of at a disadvantage because I wasn't selling in the States, you know, and so my shipping times are going to be longer as well. Well, after we came back from Germany, I thought, well, I want to continue a business. I want to work for myself. I don't want to be restricted to somebody else's schedule. Coming back to the States allowed me to really refocus on the business again and open up the shop. But I knew that I couldn't fully replace that income that I had lost since I left the military. I was only getting half the pay that I was when I was serving. And I really wanted to be able to provide that same level of income for my family. I couldn't get there selling what I was selling before. I was selling gift bags with names lettered on them um, for bridal showers and bridal parties. And on top of that, I was selling them pretty, pretty cheap as well. So while it was nice that I was still getting that income and I was still getting orders consistently, I found out that what I was really after, which was that freedom and the flexibility of my schedule wasn't really happening. I was spending so many hours writing names on these bags. And although I was getting good feedback from the customers, at the end of the day, I started to feel a little bit burnt out from it. And I knew like, I had to find something else that could still provide value to the customers, but then also like help me achieve my dream of having more freedom in my schedule and more time to spend with my family. And that's really what led me down the path to the Craft Academy. That is amazing. What a great overview about what your Etsy journey was like. And it's literally so crazy because Michi is in Germany. So like for you to go over there, you literally could have crossed paths being on Etsy and being in Germany and all that stuff. So that's pretty crazy to, to think about. I think what's fascinating about your story though, is that you had a whole life before this, like you're now in a, a whole new chapter of your life and taking full control of it now and that's awesome so you prior to the craft academy you were on etsy but you were selling gift bags and spending all this time buying them creating them selling them and then even shipping them like that takes every single step takes time right and at the end of the day do you remember how much you were profiting from these gift bags and what you were doing on etsy i would say my profit margins overall were probably about 40% on a, on a good month, I maybe made $500. Was that profit or revenue? That was profit. So I was okay. doing a lot of bags. I was getting a lot wow, of that's a, yeah, that's a lot yeah. of bags. <laughs> Top of that, that was that was a lot of time invested, like you said, back and forth to this store because I wasn't even ordering the bags online because I'm very, very picky about quality. So I did try to order the bags online once and they, the box came in and the bags were super wrinkled. And so that just became lunch bags for my boys. And <laughs> I, I went back to the store to find just the right bags. But again, like that's the back and forth and for very little profit. And I can even tell you when I read through the, the reviews on my Etsy site, you know, people would mention quality, yes. People would mention speed of shipping. They would also start to mention like, oh, they're like bargain priced. And I didn't want to be known Oops. as that person that's just, you know, bargain basement um, bag. Yeah. Because while I love serving the customer, I also have to make an income for my family. Yeah, you definitely don't want your niche to be the bargain hunter at like, I don't know, Goodwill or something like that, right? Like you want to be known as like the luxury calligrapher, being able to provide quality, but also um, charge that as well. When did you decide to join the Craft Academy? Out of frustration one day was just watching YouTube videos about how to have a calligraphy business. Like what steps do I need to take? Because I can't do this for five years. I can't, I can't sell bags for five years, you know? Mm. I need to find something that's going to be more valuable valuable, but I can sell at a higher price point, still something that I love to do and still provide something that the customer loves and wants to keep for a long time. As I'm watching these YouTube videos and I kind of had it on autoplay, you know, and I was kind of multitasking at, at the same time. I just remember this video coming on about calligraphy engraving. And I stopped and I said, what? Like, what is that? You know, and it was you. <laughs> And you're explaining like how you go on site and how you do these calligraphy engravings for all these amazing clients. And you talked about like how it had revolutionized your business and it just caught my attention right away. And I was, I was like glued to the screen like where, whereas I had been like 
you know, kind of focus on other things, then I, you have my attention and I, I had to, you know, obviously I had to know more about it. So I started to just like watch more videos and kind of do the research. I'm not the kind of person that just invests in a program just, you know, without giving it much thought. I gave it a lot of thought. I did the research and the more and the more I researched, I was like, this is the right decision and I have to join. Oh my God, I love that so much. I'm glad that I caught your attention based on what you were doing. I think what's really interesting about what you just said was not only were you becoming like the bargain person, in the Etsy space, but you were also not feeling fulfilled because you were the bargain person, because you weren't charging enough, because you were creating bags ultimately. And like you do create a value to the client when you make these bags, like just having gotten married, like I know how valuable customization is and you know how special it makes a present in one day because of your bags. But at the same time, is this something that's fulfilling for you that you can do for five, 10, 20 years versus like when, what your business looks like now, you're creating a full value because you are creating that luxury experience because you're creating memorabilia that people are gonna keep forever and they're actually gonna cherish for so many more years to come, for generations to come. And I think that's more impactful than just like riding on bags, you know? And then thank you for, for watching the YouTube videos. I'm so happy <laughs> that that video resonated with you. And I'm gonna guess it's the, the journey, like my CEO story um, on that. And I think that's when I walked through my entire journey and so I'm glad I'll link that in the description too so you guys can watch if you haven't done so already but thank you so much for for sharing that story that makes me so it feels so fulfilling to like be able to inspire calligraphers all around the world um to create their own calligraphy businesses thank you <laughs> yeah of course so fast forward to April of 2023, you've now invested in the Craft Academy. What did that look like for you, the transformation part? As soon as I started into the program, like I realized that I was getting so much more value than I knew I was going to be getting value. I'll just make that clear right away. But like I got so much more than I expected, really. I did invest in a program earlier this year that before April of 2023, that was more based on like a product uh, based business. And while it was OK, it wasn't exactly what I needed as a calligraphy business owner because it was business owners of all sorts. There were people that are working with pottery, with leather work, people that were selling handmade bracelets and jewelry and dresses and everything, you name it. So the advice and the guidance that was coming from the coaches wasn't really speaking directly to me. And so I really quickly, I lost interest in the program overall. Coming into the Craft Academy, it was like night and day. Number one, the way that the modules are set up, it's like walking you through all the steps that you need to take. Everything was super clear. And then on top of that, you have checkpoints where you can, you do, it's homework. I know people hate the word homework, you know, but it's, <laughs> it's helpful homework that if you do the homework, if you do the legwork, it helps you revolutionize your business. Not just the modules, though, but on top of that, you do the weekly coaching calls and not just one coaching call per week, but two coaching calls per week where you're actually investing your own time as a coach to guide us along the way based off of your experience. And we learn from each other, like everybody's learning from each other. Everybody's sharing. There's no gatekeeping. It's so open and we can be vulnerable with each other. And that's how we're growing as business owners. It's just amazing to be a part of a community like the one that you built. Like, I know I've told you before on the Facebook groups and social media, but I don't think there's a program really that matches TCA, hands down. I'm getting emotional. I know, I stop it. <laughs> um, and then the cherry on top is like, you feel like you have that support 24 7. you know you have that support because even though you know like you have the modules you have the coaching calls you also have the facebook group so in the middle of the week if i have a question you know and i'm like i'm dealing with a new circumstance or a situation i've never been in before and i need some guidance and i need someone to weigh on on it i can go to the facebook group and there is a community full of other calligraphers and engravers that have walked the path that have maybe been in the same situation i've been in and then they're providing answers to those questions so like the whole program overall is just it's amazing ah alicia girl you're gonna make me cry jesus <laughs> God. Oh, that, yeah that like that really touched my heart and i appreciate you saying that so much words cannot express the value and the impact that TCA can have on members just like you and so many more 
up and coming in the future, you know, because it is a lifetime membership, like your business is going to continue to shift and grow. The social media is going to look completely different next year, right? Like right now it's TikTok and Instagram, but it's going to, you know, a whole new platform could come up and things change all the time and like our goal and what's kind of exciting as calligraphy business owners is being able to adapt and learn and shift with the market and ultimately create our own markets you know so thank you so much for sharing that and thank you for doing the work and putting in as much effort as you do you know just because i give you the keys to the castle doesn't mean you're actually going to take the key walk in and do the work you know and do everything that you need to so that this is just as much a testament to you and your hard work and perseverance as it is for how great the program is. Okay, so let's shift gears a little bit and talk more about Etsy because I know people are really looking for that. So with Etsy, prior to the Craft Academy, you're making about $500 a month. I'm gonna guess you were selling thousands of bags at that point. You shut down your Etsy with our advice from the program and now you've reopened it and you've become more successful. So tell us about that transformation and how you got there and how you kind of fix the listings and stuff like that. The primary reason I shut it down was because I knew that my pricing just wasn't right. And I started to think about it because I still wanted to do in-studio commissions. Mm -hmm. uh, and I figured one of the ways I could do that was by having an Etsy shop. I have to go back to my pricing again. And I took some of the same, the lessons learned that I had from going through the modules and the pricing specifically. And I said, well, I'm just gonna adjust my pricing to what the true value of my offering is. You know, I and I think that's a fear a lot of people have when they go on Etsy. They look around Etsy and they see all these people that are selling at super low prices. Mm -hmm. They're probably not making a whole lot of profit, you know, but if you want to compete with them, naturally you're going to think, well, my prices should match that. I need to set my prices low too. Even though I know what I'm selling is of value, how am I going to compete otherwise? But I think that goes into the whole idea of the customer perception. Because for me specifically, um, if I see two products side by side and one of them has set their prices super, super low and the other one is, you know, a little bit higher, naturally as a consumer, I'm going to start thinking about, well, you know, there's got to be something off about the one that's lower price. I, I don't know what it is, but I'm not really feeling quite comfortable with that one. I want a better item. So I'm more likely to buy the higher price item knowing that there's a reason that they set the price that way is because they're confident with the value that they're offering to their clients and their customers. I pushed my prices higher and a part of the reason I, I was able to do that was because of the mindset work that comes with TCA. One of the initial modules in TCA really gets you to dive deep into your mindset as a business owner and pricing your work. And I found that when I was able to adjust my prices, that didn't mean that the clients and the customers or stopped you know buying what I was offering they still they continue to buy because they knew that I set my prices that way for a reason um, because I'm I'm providing quality and providing value I put the time and attention and the detail into what I'm selling you know a lot of that attention to detail even down to like the way that I take my photos and videos comes from what I've learned in TCA I took what I learned in those modules and I shifted it to to Etsy and the way that I was showing up on Etsy. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what really helped me to really change the way I was showing up there. Mm -hmm. And I'm still making sales. Yeah, so. you were attracting a different kind of client. So you were Absolutely. still on the same platform, but you were attracting different clients that valued your work more. Yes. Um, are you selling the same stuff? Or are you still selling bags and things or? That's a good question. I do still have bags, but I have raised the prices on the bags and I do still have people adding them to their cart. Right. But what that means for me now is that since I push the price up, people, maybe I won't get as many orders on the bags, but when I do, it's going to be worth my time, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to spend hours and hours doing these bags. Right. I'll probably phase those bags out uh, somewhere down the line, but I have added on engraved perfume bottles, hand painted perfume bottles. And really the reason I did that was because when I think about my business name, Heirloom Ink Studio, it's like, this is something that's supposed to last for a long time mm -hmm. and bags, you know, maybe look even, maybe they won't, but an engraved perfume bottle that has a special sentiment engraved onto it, has their, their new married name etched onto it or their monogram, they're probably going to keep that for a long time. So I will continue to add on things to the Etsy storefront that are more lasting and more enduring than paper bags. Although I love doing those, but I need to- Way I easier to, to recycle a paper bag than it is a perfume. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
I'll do yeah. my best, you know, but I just I need to make sure that I'm still doing something that's worth my time. Because at the end of the day, like if I if I'm just doing bags for hours and hours into the night, and I I could tell you about one order I had a 100 bag order, and my hand, yes, it was crazy. At first, I was really happy about it, but then like halfway through it, I was like, this is this is not good. I just can't keep taking that time away from my family, yep. you know? And that's at the end of the day, like as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, I really need to value my time and I really need to price what I'm worth so that it, it all becomes worth it in the end. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, Alicia. Yes. I know. We like we talk about pricing a lot and pricing in itself is pretty challenging. But I think the main reason why pricing is challenging is because your mindset isn't quite there yet, right? Like you you feel bad, like you're, you're ripping people off, you're taking advantage of people. But at the same time, there's a lot of opportunity costs that you have to sacrifice. It's time with your family, your mental and your physical health. Like there's just so many more things behind it. In addition to the amount of time that you've practiced your craft, like if anyone looks at Alicia's stuff, like her calligraphy is like so beautiful, so dreamy, and you can tell that she's worked on it for many, many years. So people deserve to get that, but also compensate you fairly for that, right? And you do have to provide for your family and things so I think it's totally fair for you to charge the amount that you are and I'm happy that you you still have a little bit of your Etsy roots of like doing the paper bags and stuff um, but if you are selling it you know you're making a decent amount to actually compensate you for the amount of time but also you're working less and potentially making the same amount so that is a really great consideration there and now you've added your heirloom stuff onto the Etsy shop how has the shifting in your products shifted the landscape of your business itself oh so i would say definitely um it's allowed me to really focus on what i love to do i've actually niched down and i know i just said like i might add more products to my shop but realistically i'm in a place where i'm very comfortable i know i know who i am i know what i want to offer um precisely at this point in time so being able to scale back and then offer something of more value, I'm now becoming more efficient with my processes. I don't have to go and like think about packaging for this item and packaging for that item and you know ordering multiple things and having like a house full of inventory. I'm so sure on what I'm offering right now that my flow is just a lot better and it's taking me less time to complete off orders and I'm still providing that same level of quality. As a matter of fact, I, I feel like the quality is getting better because I'm really just focused in mm -hmm. on a certain offering whereas before if i was scattered doing all those things that i was doing before the bags the decals the mugs the tumblers you name it you can't be good at all these different things and when you really narrow it down and, and niche down and focus like mm -hmm. then you're more likely to really become a specialist and that helps you to provide that really really good value i love that Amazing. So what does your business look like now? Can you give us an insight into what your financial picture looks like? Yes. Yeah, so actually, um, this last week, um, I've had one of the best weeks I've had since I started. It was incredible. And I looked at the numbers, I realized that based off of a live event engraving I did last Saturday, leading up until this just past Saturday with the SE orders that I had, I made close to $3,000. It was incredible. It was crazy. I never thought it was possible, but it was a result of number one, like being able to go out there and, and pitch to brand space off of what I learned in TCA. That's how I secured that engraving event. And then also what I learned in TCA, putting that into Etsy and pricing right and giving a different offer, a different value to the customer that was able to help me scale there. So I was blown away by what was able to happen just by like really focusing in on all the things that I've learned. Oh my gosh, that's amazing, Alicia. A huge congratulations to you for making a $3,000 week. That is an Thanks. amazing feat. That doesn't happen overnight, y'all. Um, she's been in the program since April, but she's had the business prior to that. So it does take time. It takes effort and resilience and Alicia is a wonderful example of that massive congratulations that is not a small feat at all it's only November so we still have time to do more events and do more Etsy sales and you've really sounds like you've really narrowed down who your ideal client is what your ideal price point is and really just valuing the amount of time that
that is yours now. Even if you are a retiree, you still have family obligations and other things. So I think it's amazing that you've been able to pull this off. So congratulations, Alicia. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. And this is honestly just the beginning. So don't even fret. Like you're going to do so much more um, in the next coming years, even like this month and next month's going to be so fabulous for you. So I'm excited to support you throughout that and um, continue to use you as a beacon of hope for everyone else in TCA and for anyone else who is looking to have a similar transformation like Alicia did, whether it's just for a hobby side money, or if you really want to take your business to the next level, definitely check out wandercrafter.com slash craft academy. Feel free to reach out to Alicia and ask her what her experiences are. To close today's interview, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions that we ask everyone who does these case studies with us. What advice would you give to someone who's thinking about investing in themselves? I would say don't continue to put it off and put it off and put it off some more, you know, because there's only so long that you can spin in your wills essentially and trying to go to multiple different sources for the information and piece it together. Over the course of time, that's going to get frustrating and you're losing out on an opportunity to really shift your business. And I would say like find something that has a comprehensive outlook on how to start a calligraphy business, you know? Find something that has a built-in community that's going to support you along the way. Find something that has people that are cheering you along and celebrating your success and that will be there to pick you up. Because in business, we have stumbles sometimes, but wouldn't it be better if you have a community behind you to lift you up and to help you keep going? So instead of doing it all by yourself, you know, and operating out of confusion, walk a path that's already been laid out for you. That would be my, my best advice. That's what I did and I am loving life right now. Ah, I love it. Love that so much. So last question that I ask everyone, what would you tell yourself um, in the very beginning, knowing what you know now? I would tell myself that I'm, I'm worth it. You are worth it. 100% you are worth it. Make the investment for yourself. You will never regret it. You're only going to grow and expand and continue challenging yourself more and more than you you ever thought was even possible if you didn't have someone like the Craft Academy behind you. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Alicia. I appreciate you for coming and spending time with us today. I know we've, we've only known each other for like six-ish months now, but... I feel like I've known you forever and you've already made such large strides in your business that I know this is just the beginning for you. There's so much more ahead and I cannot wait to support you through that, all of that. And for anyone who's interested in the Craft Academy or is resonating with Alicia's interview, please check out the Craft Academy. It's wandercrafter.com slash craft academy. You can even go to the website wandercrafter.com slash apply and make an appointment with us. Uh, consider it your complimentary coaching session. You'll talk to someone, either me or someone on my team about your specific business, where you wanna take it and how we can help you if we can help you. So with that, definitely subscribe to the channel, comment on the video if you have any other questions or what part resonated with you the most. Thank you so much, Alicia, for spending the time with us and telling us your story. I cannot wait to see where the rest of your business is going. And with that, Thank you all for coming. Thank you so much, Alicia, for spending the time with us. I appreciate you so much. Can't wait to see you on our coaching call. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Bye, guys.